Because of social media, artists have more opportunities than ever. It's like leveling the playing field for everyone. Before, if you want to be a fine artist, you need to work with a gallery, get yourself out there to be featured in magazines or art shows. But now, with social media, anyone can put their work out there for the public to see. But this can also be a trap for us artists. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. This past week, I did a painting of my cousin, a very lovely girl. I painted the first one, and I was eager to share it on social media. Despite many people praised the painting, I wasn't happy because if I was being honest with myself, I knew that wasn't the best I could do. I was rushing to finish it so I can make a video about it and share it on Instagram. And then I realized that I fall into the trap of social media. We are living in this day of age that people are addicted to speed and information. This affect both consumers. And creators, we are able to access information real time right at our fingertips, and there is no shortage of them either. If you want, you can easily spend your whole day watching YouTube, Netflix, looking at Instagram and Facebook posts. So that inevitably affecting us, the artists and creators. See, in order for us to compete in this culture of social media, we want to grab people's attention as much as we can with both quality and quantity of our outputs. But the dilemma of it is that quality and quantity can't always coexist, especially in art. Doesn't mean some masters can whip out a good quality artwork in a short amount of time, but typically good quality works take time to develop. I said develop because it doesn't mean you spend a whole day working on a single piece, but sometimes you do need to take your time to think about it, study it, and do research about it. Most of the social media experts will tell you that it is essential to post consistently every single day if you can. And while I do understand where that's coming from, and I do agree that's what it takes for many people to establish a strong social media presence. This to me feels like a reaction to the market that we are in right now, because we are trying to cater to the addiction of this fast information consumption market. So I started to find myself rushing through paintings, trying to get it done, so I can make my next YouTube video or upload it to my Instagram, in hoping to get more followers to make sure that my followers won't forget about me. I realized that I am doing artwork to cater to my social media presence, not just simply trying to do the best I can and create art. I find it a wrong motivation to paint, so I decided to paint the same painting again. This time, really take my time to do the best I can, and if that means I need to miss a week of YouTube video or miss a few days on Instagram, so be it. I just don't want that feeling of regret, knowing that I could have done better. But I didn't. I want to have the satisfaction of knowing that I did the best I could. Of course, there's always room for improvement. So that doesn't mean that I can put out a perfect painting just given enough time. But that satisfied feeling of did the best I could is simply irreplaceable with getting more followers and like from social media. That doesn't mean I don't appreciate you for liking me and subscribe to my channel. That just means that I want to do the best I could for every single painting that I've painted. So that's my little sharing here. Now I am going to share the process of this painting. Before we start, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you won't miss my next video. Okay, let's start. So as always, I start the painting with the drawing, and for this one especially, the drawing is very very important. And this immediately is the first trap that I fall into when I was doing the first one. I rush through the drawing, and I want to get to the painting fast, but that's not a good move at all. Because if you want to have a solid painting, a solid drawing is very, very important, especially for a person, especially for a portrait. The proportion could be wrong, the structure could be wrong, something could be off, and it's going to ruin the whole painting. And because I'm not the type of artist that do figures and portrait all the time, like every single day, 
there's a lot of things that I need to take some time to measure, to check, to reference, to make sure that this looks somewhat correct, at least looks natural and not like way off. So this time around, I definitely spend a lot more time. I use a dollar four B pencil to just get some big shape down and now I switch to a mechanical pencil and start to go into detail and start to draw some finer lines, some finer marks so that I can make a better cleaner drawing with it. Because if you don't have a nice drawing to start off with, when you are doing the painting, you're going to second guess yourself a lot. And that's not going to be good because especially for watercolor, a lot of hesitation is going to result in dirty wash and lack of confidence in your brush strokes. Both are very important for a good watercolor painting. Moreover, if you don't have a solid drawing to follow with, you are going to end up with a painting that's just going to look awkward, especially when you're painting a person. So here's the first wash. I pretty much covered the whole face and you can paint over to the hair a little bit because the hair is going to be darker later. And I use a nice clean damp brush to lift some of the paint off so I can get some light from this wash. So after the first wash is done, I start to go into it and start to paint some structures, get a little bit of the middle value in. So I take my time for each and every single brush stroke as long as I can take. Obviously, I don't want everything to be dry, but before I lay down each brush stroke, I try to think about where I'm going to put it and how is it going to look. So even though I'm not doing a lot of details, I'm not building the portrait with thousands of tiny little brush strokes, each brush stroke is very, very important. And that is something that I want to really spend some time to think about. Because if you don't think about where your brush stroke is going to be, how it's going to look, you are just kind of blindly trying to make a mark. And if it works out, that's a happy accident which is not a bad thing, according to Bob Ross, but you cannot paint a believable painting just with happy accidents. So think about what value, what shape you're going to paint before you try to paint it and where you're going to soften the edges. Those are all very, very important. So whenever you see a master doing a painting, even though they are painting with minimum amount of strokes, each stroke has a lot of thought behind it. And the tricky part about this specific painting is that the lighting is actually pretty soft. So a lot of the value differences, a lot of the structure, they are very, very subtle. So if I make a mark that is too dark, it's not going to look pleasant because the lighting will look too harsh, but if I make the mark too light, then it's not enough to describe a structure, describe a form. So this is definitely something that's a little bit of challenge for me in this portrait. And that needs patience as well. Now, when I talk about patience, again, I'm not talking about painting millions of little details. I'm talking about really slow down and think about what you're going to paint and try to do it right. Because if it's a scenery painting, sometimes it's okay if you have an extra brushstroke or two. But for portrait, especially for a girl's face, you don't want too many extra brushstrokes. You don't want too much contrast. You want it to look as simple as possible and yet as solid as possible. So make every brushstroke count. Every brushstroke should mean something. So now the face is mostly rendered. I start to paint the hair. And immediately when I paint the darker hair, we have a full range of value. We have light from the light of the skin to the middle value, which is some of the dark on the face. And now we have dark, which is mostly the hair. And the face starting to come alive. So like I said, this is my cousin. This photo I think is taken by her friend. She was learning about flower arrangement lately. And I find that photo very, very beautiful. It's just very simple. The lighting is really soft. And of course she's very lovely. So I decided to paint it. So that's another reason why I wanted to 
do a better painting because I feel like if I don't really do the best I can for this painting, it can feel a little bit disrespectful for the model as well, even though she's not posing for my painting. But I still feel like if I decided to paint someone, I should try to do the best I can, not just to be responsible, accountable to myself, but also to respect the person that I'm painting. So I need to remind myself that I'm not painting for a social media presence. I'm really painting because I love the subject, because I feel very passionate about what I'm doing. So here I'm giving a glaze over the face because I feel like the light and the dark, it lists a little bit too much jump. I can use another transition and the face can be a little bit warmer. It's a little bit too red. So I did a glaze. So when I'm doing portrait like these, where there's more torso going on, I usually like to start off with the face and try to get it as far as I can, just because I want to motivate myself to finish the painting. Because if the face is really finished and well done, and the rest of the painting is still empty, it will kind of urge me to keep going to finish the painting. Because you see a glimpse of what it can be when it's finished. So I paint the background and while it is still wet, I do some wet onto wet for the clothes, for her shirt. Now the shirt is a lot darker. So I take this opportunity to bring that dark out back to the background as well. There's a very soft shadow casting on the wall behind her and I really want to get that nice soft gradation from light to dark for the background as well. So there's quite a bit of wet onto wet going on for her clothes, for her shirt, and the background. So now it is almost dry. I start to work on the hand. The process is the same between the hand and the face, just that since the hand is not the focus, I just very loosely indicate those and do some wet onto wet for the value variation. She's holding a phone and the photo I don't want to paint a smartphone. I don't feel like it belongs in this painting. So I just have her hold like a cloth or something. So it did an overall wash and I just paint some middle values to show the structure of the hand. And that's about it. The focus is still the face and everything else is just trying to support that. We're just trying to give her face a little bit more context. So now I'm continue painting some dark on her hand and now I'm painting the color of her shirt, continue that dark value over. And it's very important to keep the overall value because if you look into the detail, you can start to make out of different light and dark within her dark shirt. But if you step back a little bit and if you squint your eyes, all this detail merge into the dark shape. So it's very important you maintain the overall shape and maybe make some subtle differences when it comes to the value, maybe the shadow and the light within the dark shirt. So here I'm adding some more dark to the dark shirt. Watercolor dries light, and especially if you're doing wet onto wet, there are a lot of water there. So the wetter your mixture is, the lighter is going to dry. So that's why some of the washes that I did earlier, they dry quite a bit. So I need to go back in and redarken some of those shapes. So I'm painting this imaginary cloth that she's holding. It's pretty subtle and I don't really have a reference, so I just paint some wrinkles and stuff where she's holding and that's about it. Just so that her hand is apparently holding something. I'm darkening the shirt again and I'm actually go into it and have some of the darker shadows. And now I'm continue to darken the apron giving it a little bit of the texture as well. Adding a little bit more dark on her shirt. It keeps drying lighter, so I need to keep going back and make it darker. Sometimes the mixture I mix is not thick enough, 
but when the paint is too dry, it can be a little bit hard to paint as well. So there's a fine balance between mixing a thick enough, dark enough paint versus mixing just a very, very dry paint. Having some water will make the paint flow a little bit easier, but that inevitably will make it a little bit more transparent and it will dry lighter as well. So I'm continue touching up, adding a little bit more dark on the cloth. So at this stage, I am just trying to finish what I'm doing. And because of the straps on the apron, I am able to kind of separate her shoulder, her sleeves and her collar since they are separated. So that actually helps to give me a little bit of breathing time so I can focus on a spot first before I move on to her left hand. So I'm painting some form on her shoulder strap. And I'm mixing some more dark to paint her left hand. So the color I mix is mostly cobalt turquoise, but I mix with quite a bit of cerulean blue from Mission Gold. And I add some burnt sienna just to get this kind of dark greenish gray, which I find it a very nice color to paint with. I want her left hand to feel a little bit more fade back, a little bit more soft. So I just put a bunch of water on the bottom so that the bottom edge kind of fades off. And I did change her pose a little bit. In the original photo, she extend her hand out quite a bit more, but we don't have enough room for the painting and it's not going to look as good. So I decided to make her hand comes down a little bit more, less extend out so that I have room to suggest a little bit of flower. But since the focus of the painting is her face, I will need to make the flower a lot more simple so that people can still focus on the face and her expression and everything, not the flower. And even though she is learning about flower arrangement, the subject of the painting is her, not the flower. So I just do some very quick, simple shape. Just as long as we keep it clean, it's going to look okay. So I pre-wet some of the area here and there. So when I paint over that, it's going to soften up a little bit. I intentionally didn't do a drawing for the flower because I really just want to keep it in as some abstract shapes. And as long as it reads somewhat like a flower, I did my job. So just because I want to spend a little bit more time on this painting, I want to spend my time on what matters. So if I spend too much time on painting the flower, it's going to take the attention away from what I want the viewer to focus on. So this is quite important. You still want a good focus for your painting. Everything else you can make it very loose or even abstract if you want to. So I'm just adding some more detail dark here and there, adding some more dark folds on the aprons, but also the shirt, some more details on the apron. I want to bring out that sort of this canvas quality to the apron. So I need to add just a little bit more texture. And I darken the hair a little bit as well so that her face and the skin will look brighter that way. And now I'm trying to finishing up the background. There's still a little bit of the shadow in the background, so I'm trying to get those in. I also darken the shadow behind her. And here is the finished painting. I hope you like this painting. I'm really glad that I took my time for the second time to paint a better picture of her. Like I said, it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect because I'm still learning as well. But the feeling that I did the best I could in a painting is just really satisfying. 
So I hope like today's video, while I'll still try to put out weekly video for you, there might be times that I need to skip a week so that I can do better painting with the time I got. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can also visit my website at cafewatercolor.com, sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide and some bonus videos. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.